Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today we're going to be in DaVinci Resolve messing with a brand new Cinepax Whiteout FX2 pack. And I'm going to be showing you how we made these two awesome clips inside DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump right into it. Now if you haven't purchased the pack yet, there is a free sample pack for the first Whiteout FX pack on the Cinepax website. So just head on over to there, look at the free pack section, and you can download any of these packs, use them for commercial use, and mess with the assets and follow along if you want. Once you've downloaded your pack, let's get inside DaVinci Resolve. So when you first download the pack, you're going to notice that they all come in zip folders. So make sure to open up each one of these, drag all of these folders. I, I tend to drag each of these folders into a brand new folder. Uh, this is where I keep all my VFX packs and I just put them all in one folder so they're easy to import. Now let's just get them inside DaVinci Resolve. So I'll just drag this folder. If you drag it right here in your media pool, it's going to destroy the folder structure. But if you drag it right here, it's going to keep the folder structure. So I already imported it so we have it right here so there's a huge amount that comes in this pack there's light letters and titles for each of the alphabet there's a uh, you know white ones which is like thick paint here um, and then there's also skinny red ones um, for both uppercase and lowercase we're gonna mess with that later uh, then there's uh, faces and such so you got like spooky scary faces this is like an eyeball um, then you have it combined so you don't have to make them yourselves uh, but then you can also use different things like the tongues and stuff. They're pretty cool. Okay, so here's our first clip. Now, the big thing that we're going to be doing a lot is a lot of compound clips and nesting clips because we're going to be using a lot of clips here. So you can use these however you want, but what we like to do is do a freeze frame. So let's drag this out for a few frames. And then right here when it goes to red with that backlight, I'm going to right click on this. Um, well, actually, I'm going to click on the timeline. I'm going to click Control B to make a cut. Then I'm going to grab the second clip, right click, go to retime, uh, change clip speed, and check that little freeze frame button. And that creates our freeze frame. So if we play it through, it plays, and then it freezes right there. Perfect. Okay, so let's go to our overlay paper textures, grab whichever one we want, just extend it over to cover our entire footage, and then let's just scale this up. I'm going to change it to screen. Screen looks good. Right there, perfect. And there we go. So inside of our pack, let's go to the faces folder and let's just find a cool face that kind of lines up with us. Um, I always like probably, let's see, I love this face, but I want to use that in the second clip. So let's not get repetitive. Um, maybe let's use this one right here, a scary face too. This is pretty cool. So for press play here, let's grab now our, you can always bring up this tool pressing the little transform button here. Let's just transform this onto uh, his face like so and that kind of lines up pretty okay if it doesn't line up you can also just uh, grab each of the individual eyeballs as you can see they're all separate pieces and rearrange them yourself um, so let's go ahead let's hide that and oh dang that's pretty terrifying um, so let's just uh, leave that right there press play and it comes in pretty good now the problem is it disappears though so let's go ahead and grab our second half of our clip press control B to make a cut and now let's grab this uh, second piece that we just created and change the clip speed to freeze frame. Click this little button and now we have a frozen frame and we can drag it out for the rest of our cl uh, clip. Let's say you wanted to change the color of this though. So to do that, all you have to do is open up the fusion or the color tab inside of DaVinci Resolve. And since this has color in it, there's many different ways we can approach it. I would just grab the hue slider. And as you can see by shifting the hue slider, we can make it any different color that we want. Um, I kind of do like the red. It looks pretty okay, so I'm going to leave it as is. Um, however, if you have something like a white object, let's go ahead and grab um, maybe the smiley face here. Um, if I bring this into the color tab, you're going to see that the, the hue slider doesn't really affect it as much. So in that case, I usually go to the levels right here and manually affect the offset. So let's bring up the green um, and bring down the the reds and blues and now you can start to get uh, different colors and stuff and we can the green is getting too bright so let's just leave it as is and just bring these down and now we're getting different cool colors let's make an outline of our character here though so let's grab this let's make all of our video tracks smaller that way we have some more room to work with and let's go to now in our side of our pack we're going to go to the outline trace perfect right here so as you can see there's different lines for each uh, style so we have white style and then we have uh, a red one each one of them comes with different angles so you have a curve a straight line and then like a right angle for each of these different styles that we want to use so I'm going to drag this onto our footage and then as you can see if I drag out forward it's going to create a line 
So I'm going to drag to right where, if I use my arrow keys, right where it stops uh, the animation, which is right here. And then I'm going to drag it down, scale it down, and let's go ahead and kind of position it around our guy. So right here, perfect. Then what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to drag the footage forward. That way it now lines up where, where, where this one ends, the next one will start in, in terms of animation. And I'm going to just drag this like so and kind of continue our line here. So if I'll go like this and then if I press play, you're going to see there we go, we get two, two sketches. So now I'm going to use the arrow key to see where this one ends. It ends right here. And then now I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab um, probably a different one. I'm going to grab the scratch curve here. I'm going to scale this one down. Um, it's not facing the right way, so I'm going to go to our flip and I'm going to flip it like that. And if we press play now, it's facing the correct direction. So we can rotate this and I'm going to go ahead and kind of squash it a little bit. And then let's bring it down and kind of line up with with his arm the best we can. So let's go press play and there we go. Now we're getting a cool animation. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this method for the entire body. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that. All right, so we're back. I've got a huge amount of layers right here. And as you can see, we kind of create a cool little outline here. Um, now the problem is it starts to disappear as it gets to the end. So here's what we're gonna do to fix that. And a little tedious, but we're gonna grab each one of these and just do a control B on uh, each of these to kind of like cut the ends of them so we can kind of grab it and extend it out. So let's just grab each one of these. And then obviously this is why we're gonna nest our, our clips here because we get a lot of layers and we don't want them all in our main timeline. So let's go ahead and finish this up. Now, even more tedious, we're gonna go through and change clip speed to freeze flame for all of these. So we can just drag them out. And once we have that done, if we press play, there we go. We got an awesome outline. Cool. Now, the one other thing, it's a little slow. Um, I just did a partial outline, but like it's it's pretty slow. So let's select all these, right click and create a new compound clip. It's gonna turn it all into one. So let's see, uh, we'll just call it outline. Outline, all right, perfect. And it's gonna make that compound clip just in our media pool, it's probably better to organize it somewhere, but we're fine right now. So let's go ahead and press Control R on our keyboard, and that's gonna bring up our retime control. So if we grab the top half of the clip, we can just stretch it down just like so, and that's gonna speed up our clip. So let's press play, and there we go. Now it's a lot faster. So it pops up a lot faster, and that's 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 better, cool. Um, and then once again, let's, let's tap R, um, and well, let's, Control B to make a cut, tap R to just create freeze frame and extend our new compound clip out. You can see how it uh, starts to get pretty tricky. You're doing a lot, of, a lot of compounds and a lot of nesting. And the next thing we're gonna do is make a title. So let's go into, we're gonna actually start off by making just a new uh, sequence and then just dragging it into this. So let's go ahead and I have a little thing for timelines. I'm gonna right click, create a new timeline. Uh, we'll call it a uh, white out title and create an empty timeline like this and let's just go into our effects pack and start messing with things so i want two things i want a background which we will find in our title card scribbles so there's a black scribble right here which i'm going to drag onto the timeline it's kind of hard to see right now but uh, if we zoom out we'll we'll be able to mess with it uh, let's scale this down bring it right here and then i want a second title which is just a square red one here which is right here, perfect. So I'm gonna drag these both here and I'm gonna scale this one down and go like right here. Okay, so now let's go to our font list and under the alphabet, we're gonna find both uppercase and lowercase. I'm only gonna work with the uppercase and I'm going to find, we have both red ones here and everything, but I like the white ones. So let's start messing with this. All we're gonna do is create a white out effect. So let's spell out white.
All right, and here's my layers here. So now what we're gonna do is play it through and everything looks cool, but now afterwards I'm gonna go ahead and kind of offset this. So I'm just gonna, gonna grab these maybe like one by one and just like move them over a few frames. If I press uh, the period and comma key on my keyboard, I can move things over frame by frame. So I'm gonna kind of move everything like frame by frame just so it kind of, kind of spells it out in order. And then I'm not even going to worry about, so let's just go ahead and press that. I'm gonna space these out just a little bit more, like one, two, three, and then maybe for the end ones. I don't want it to take forever to animate though. So there you go, perfect, that looks kinda nice. Um, and then I'm not even gonna worry about uh, extending these out because we can do that uh, with free framing it, freeze framing it in our main timeline. So let's take this title that we just made and drag it onto our timeline and just place it right around here. If we press play, it shows up. Let's drag this down, scale it, and place it into our scene. Just like that, perfect. And then let's press play, and it looks pretty cool. All right, but after this, we wanna extend it out. So let's go to right here, where it's good. Press Control B to make a cut, and now grab our footage, tap R, and freeze this frame. That way we can extend it out to cover the rest of our clip. And there we go, now we got a cool title. Um, I might almost wanna drag our texture on top of this so it looks better. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna do that. Perfect. All right, the final thing I'm gonna do before we add a zoom is just add some accents. So if we go to uh, transition, not transitions, um, what's markups, I like our markups. There's some cool little just uh, kind of accent things that we can use. So I like the splash one here. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm going to grab it, scale it up, like scale it up a lot and then rotate it if it'll let me do stuff. There you go. And then just kind of put it in our scene like so. Perfect, okay, cool. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and move it out and I'm gonna make another one right around here. Yeah, right there, perfect. And there we go, now we have it. And you guessed it, we're gonna come in towards the end of these and we're gonna grab these Control B to make a cut, grab the two of these, press R on each of them, freeze the frames, that way we can cover the entirety of our clip. And with that, we're ready to finally just do a quick Ken Burns effect, which is just shorthand for making it zoom. Before I do the zoom, I wanna take my outline here. I also want the title, I wanna combine everything that needs to move together into one layer. So I'm gonna drag these up, because I want the title effect and I want the texture to be separate. So I'm gonna drag all these together and I'm going to, basically I got the two accent markers and then I have the outline. So I'm gonna grab all these and I'm gonna compound these again, new compound clip. And then with that, I'll drag all these back down and grab our dynamic zoom, turn on dynamic zoom. If we press play, now it zooms out. Very cool. Um, now let's go to our texture and let's add its own dynamic zoom. But if we go to our controllers here, drag down to dynamic zoom here. Uh, let's kind of offset it a little bit, like, so it goes a little bit slower than the other footage. That way, we kind of get this cool parallax in effect. And then the final animation that I wanna do, starting to slow down my computer, we got a lot of layers going on, um, is grab our whiteout title, and I would like to add a simple kind of zoom to that one as well. So in order to do that, might wanna, might wanna compound this again. So let's compound it one more time. So it's one clip. And then uh, for this one, I'm not gonna do a dynamic zoom because we, we've scaled it down. So I'm just going to grab the zoom keyframe here. And then I'm gonna go to the zoom keyframe at the end of it. And I'm just gonna scale it up ever so slightly and maybe move it this way. And if we press play and let it render out, our effect is done. So let's just drag a transition in between these two clips and we can transition to this cool car footage here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate this exactly like we just did with the first uh, footage real quick. Um, but I'm gonna use a mask and I'm gonna invert some of the colors. So I'll show you how to do that real quick.
All right, so I've stylized the whole thing and it looks pretty cool. However, there's two things. I have these little tornadoes or smoke that's coming out of the back of the car. And first thing I wanna do, I wanna make some of these white. So that's easy. All we have to do is I'm gonna grab the two that I want to change. I also wanna change the markup. And I'm gonna go to just effects and invert. So let's search uh, invert. invert. It's gonna be under open effects here and invert color. Just drag that on and boom, now this is white and it looks pretty cool. I might even change the composite mode to something like difference. Ooh, difference looks cool. Okay, the one thing that I wanna do though is I want to mask out this tornado so it's behind the car. So I'm going to bring it into the color tab. So let's go into the color tab. And here under our nodes here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in into our alpha output. That way that's being transferred into our node while we edit it. And I'm gonna right click and I'm going to create an alpha output. That way our uh, mask will get transferred to the timeline. Um, and then all we're gonna do is gonna click on the little mask editor right here and just create a little uh, curve mask. So let's go ahead and just, uh, we can't really see through it right now. Is there a way to hide it? Not really. Um, <laughs> but we're just gonna kinda eyeball it right now. I'm gonna just kinda make a mask around our car, just like so. Okay, and here's our little mask right here, and it's gonna kinda go up, and then it's gonna go down, and there, and right here, perfect. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is now invert this mask. So if we invert it, now you can see our tornado is hidden behind the car, perfect. But let's kind of change this up so it's a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna move this, move this over, perfect. So now it kind of kind of looks better and kind of hold it out like right there, perfect. And then final thing I'm gonna do is kind of add a, a light feather to our mask right here, which we can do right here. Just bring up the soft ever so slightly and go back to our edit page. And now we have a cool mask that goes behind it. And there we go. Just like that, we're pretty much done. Just to top things off, this isn't necessarily part of the tutorial, but might go into the Cinepax DaVinci Resolve transition pack. Uh, just a little plug here. Um, and we'll also drag in maybe like our strobe effect, um, super cool effects to just kind of layer on with the other effects to make it all look cool. All right, guys, we hope you love this tutorial. We hope you found it helpful and you guys like the pack and everything. We will work really hard on these and it's super fun. If you want to grab the pack yourself or any other packs, use the code SAMPLE15 on the Cinepax website to get 15% off your next order. Make awesome effects and have a great day. Bye guys.